Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome to the vehicle designer of From the Depths. Now the reason we are in here, uh, recording From the Depths, despite the fact I said I was going to be taking a wee break from it, is I felt inspired by the comment section to give just a brief little tutorial on how to make a really basic hull for a boat. Now keep in mind, with this game there is no one way to do anything. What I'm about to show you is the method that works for me and has actually resulted in halfway decent ships. And basically there's a lot of things you can do differently. You could, like even if you don't like the way I build a hull from scratch, you can kind of go, maybe it'll give you an idea just in the process of me doing it, just how to make a basic hull design of your own. But to start it off, First, you start with the first thing, which is that. Which way is the thing facing? That way, good. And the trick is, the f with this method, it's basically just it's jigsawing pieces together so that, well, just so that they work well. And the first thing you want to decide is how wide you want your boat to be. So, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, we'll say. Then you want to decide how long the middle bit, because this design is kind of a diamond shape, so pointy bow, pointy stern, and then a non-pointy bit in the middle, so that's 13, so we'll go 1, 2, two. we'll do 20. And then we'll fill this, and here is the start of it. Now. The next thing you want to do is get slopes in. So, one wet method of building a boat is to just make a kind of square blocky thing and then smooth it out with slopes and corners and all that afterwards. I don't do that. I like to get the whole basic shape of the hull down and then I like to just fill in the insides later. So here we have this and we're going to stitch like so. And then slopes down the sides. And that is the basic front of our boat already. And not going to fill that in just yet, don't need to. Also, it helps to leave the top of the boat open. I didn't do that, I forgot. Just so you can see what you're doing. And now, what we are going to do is we're going to stitch down the middle. And this is what the bottom of the boat is going to look like. Then put slopes on that. So you can already see the beginnings of a boat shape right here, and I haven't really designed anything in particular, I'm just following the way the blocks fit together. And the reason why this boat shape is so nice is because, firstly, the thing is longer than it's tall, and it is longer than it's wide, and that's really good for stability. And particularly if you're making the whole thing out of wood like I am, it's just really good to, for making a stable vessel. And if you want to, you can make the edge wider. You can stick additional slopes on the end here, and just you can keep going from there. But for now, we are going to do this, and this is where the prefab menu is such a godsend, because you can just check the height of it, width 13, height 6, so width 13, height 6, Length four D. And now we don't have to click all the way again. Just do this, and there's our hull. Now comes the slightly time consuming bit, except not really. We want to stitch up here. Hmm. Don't think I did that right. Eh. So stitch up here, like so. That. Okay, disregard that. I'm breaking my own rules. So, forget about that for a second. We are going to stitch. Like so. These are the triangle corners. And then, inverted triangle corners. And I, I always like to have 
a double layer inside like that simply because it makes the boat tougher. You don't need to do that. If you're in a hurry or you don't want a particularly durable craft, then you can just skip that bit. So you can stitch all the way up here. Have a slope there. Inverted triangle corner there. One thing I like about this method is that it's quite therapeutic almost. Like when you've run when I've run out of ideas with From the Depths, I just like to build a hull. I just like to build a hull and just you just build a hull and just turn the brain off for a second. Don't worry about, you know, munition defenses or PIDs or any of the really complicated stuff. I'm just gonna I figured out how this works. I'm just gonna stitch in here. You might be wondering well, this is kind of a showcase of just I don't build in particular orders or anything like that. Hello. Interesting quirk I've come up with here. Now I wonder how that happened, because that's not actually meant to happen. Ah, uh, well. Well. No worries then. And since this is the front of the boat, I like to put a wedge right in the front. Most hydrodynamic slash aerodynamic good of it. There you go, there's the stern. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Oh no, wait, I know how that happened. It's because I've left the bottom three locks wide. That's absolutely fine. It can just be like that. So there we have the bow and saving time. Once again, go to the prefab menu. No, wipe please. Then begin capture process. Do that and it's already the right width and height. Is it in the right place? Yes it is. And then... 24. Yeah, that'll do. Doesn't need the wedge on the back. The one the one of the downsides with this is that because the way I do it, you end up with the stern and the bow looking really similar. So it's a good idea just to put something in to help you distinguish the two. And so now we've done that, we have a basic hull that floats quite nicely. Because the entire thing's made out of wood, but never mind that. And we're gonna take this out here. There you go, you have a hull. I forgot to set my timer, I just realized. Whoopsies! Probably too late, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Eh, start. Okay, so there's our hull. It's nice and hydrodynamic. And an awful lot of my ships use a system kind of like this. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then, next step I like to do is like, we now have a nice little cavity right in the bottom here, which is a good place to stick ammunition. Now again, not hard and fast rule here, but I like to put ammunition in the bottom of a boat because it's safe below the waterline. And also because enemies will try and aim like at the very bottom of the ship, which means a lot of the shots will just pass underneath the ship and miss, especially at close range. So we're gonna do this. Incidentally, it's usually a better idea to, like, space out your ammo compartment so if, say, this little one gets blown up, it doesn't blow all of them up. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just making a speedy build right here. And then surround the ammo in metal on all sides. Put some metal on top of it. And if you want to save costs, you can use stone instead. Like that. I like using metal because the difference here is... a Incredible, actually. So, stone, health 1800, armor 7 for a beam, and for metal it is 2100, armor 15, and that makes quite a big difference, actually. And surrounding on all sides with metal. Like so. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm mildly goofed here because directly below these metal bits or oh, not maybe not okay cool i was about to say that you want to preferably put solid beams around any vulnerable parts of your ship rather than slopes or corners or anything like that because solid beams are tougher i've dodged that bullet thankfully we are here and we're just gonna do this 
I like to do- this is another thing I like to do, by the way. I prefer to build in wood first and then add metal on afterwards. And I really should put, turn my UI back on, but I'm having a good time, so sue me. Doo -doo. And another benefit of having the most heavily armored bit of your ships near the bottom is because it kind of sorts the center of mass problem all by itself. And we're just gonna go completely mad and have one more layer of met- what have I just done? There we go, that's what I want. And seven, doom, 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 and... It also really helps to, to have keyboard shortcuts for pretty much all your stuff. And we're just gonna do this. As well. I usually don't armor up my ships nearly as much as this, even though, as armor goes, this is what, like, three layers of metal? Which, in this game, is not a lot, trust me. It is not a lot at all. So there, there, and we're just gonna do this, for sake of completion. And there you go. We now have a neatly armored ammunition compartment. And the great thing about building like this is like, see, now I want here all other essential components to be at least three blocks away from this ammo belt right here. So one, two, three, everything needs to be above here. So there's our danger zone. Problem is that's right at the top of the ship. And that's not a problem. You can actually just build the ship up, build up the walls like this, and you can just do that. Not gonna do that now. We're in a hurry, gosh darn it. Also, I believe that... I think uh, ever since the armor buffs, ammunition can't quite break through a layer of metal like that. But, just in case it can, not gonna bother. So that's ammunition. Next you want AI and engines, and I'm gonna fast forward through that bit, because you just plonk them wherever they fit, really. So I am going to put the AI in the front. It might speed up this. Okay, so we've slapped an engine and an AI on this thing. The proud name of vehicle unnamed mainframe. And as you can see, I've goofed slightly in that this thing is a little bit front heavy. But that's okay, because we're about to jam a huge amount of propulsion on it. But before we do that, we are going to add the weapon systems. And should mention right now, this engine is dangerously close to the ammunition. That's okay. We're just this is just showing off really basic stuff. Actually, this particular setup right here, the ammunition does not get detonated easily. On one of my ships, the Skink, it has pretty much this exact setup. Well, not exact, it has a lot more layers of wood in between the ammunition and the very edge of the hull. But it hardly ever gets its ammunition blown up, and I sometimes wonder why. I guess I just had a clever moment that day. But in any case, we're going to stick some missiles on here just to show what's what. We'll fast forward through that too, most likely. In case you're wondering, this is probably way too many missiles for this particular little boat. But that's okay, we're having fun. We are having a good time, and we're probably going to just see how this ends up. These are probably not going to be very big missiles, I should mention. In fact, they're going to be tiny. Oh, also one rather cute little trick I figured out is how to rapidly make a missile gantry using the cunning bait-and-switch technique. 
you do that, and then you fill. And fill. And that saved us a lot of clicking. And for this, I am going to... Okay, that's three blocks. We want four. And we are going to load... Mini Cruiser. And this is... Not an especially amazing little missile. It hasn't got clever targeting or anything like that. It's just small, low-velocity missile that just... I oh know, you fling it and away it goes. Very easy to spam though. And I really should assign it to all same like missiles. Okay, so we've got the start of a boat going. We've got... Incidentally, I've built this boat this way because pretty much all my designs tend to run away from the enemy a lot. And so all the really vital components are in the front. Because my boats tend to get shot up the butt a lot. Which means this is all going to be nice little spaced armor right here. And by spaced armor, I mean lots of wood. Just lots of wood. So, I'll probably... Fast forward again, but uh, if you're wondering why I'm putting all this stuff on a boat where it's meant to be just a basic boat tutorial, the propulsion is one of the things you must add last. You must figure out the center of drag, you must figure out where the weight of your ship is, and then you must put the propellers on and all that good stuff. And I'm just going to fill all this with wood, because la multi-layers of wood is surprisingly tough. Am I even going to bother to put... Yeah, I am going to put repair bots on this thing. It's just, it's the smart thing to do, you know. Might not bother with air pumps, though, because, as it, I mentioned before, this thing is almost entirely wood. This thing is not going to have any trouble staying afloat. It might flip itself, but there's a cunning trick I have, which is the answer to that. Get back to you in a second. Four meter slopes are your best friend. Just saying. Okay, so there we have a bridge of sorts. This thing is uh, turned out to be a bit more fat than I was originally envisaging, but uh, that's how you go with From the Depths. Sometimes you build the boat, sometimes the boat builds you. That does not make any sense. But, anyway, so now we've got most of the mess on. We still need to add detection equipment, but here's the thing. This thing's armed with missiles, and missiles only. It doesn't really need detection systems, but it is handy anyway. Also, I think radar looks nice, so... We're going to put that on right here. Also, another handy trick, you do not need connectors if it's just the one thing you're sticking on it. So, we're going to do that. And then we're going to do that. And that looks ugly as hell. So, we're going to hide it. Down there. Nope, don't look, Timmy. Don't look. You're not old enough to look. There you go. No one will notice at all. So now we've got the, we've got, let's check the checklist. We have all that stuff except a chair. All right, fine. We'll add a chair. We will add a chair. We'll add a chair right here. Wheel stick. And also, I don't do fancy bridges. Sorry for those of you who like aesthetics. I do this. I just 
I do this and I do that and I do this right here and that looks ugly as balls and there's a one block which is also going to probably upset some people I know it upsets me so there we now have most of the essentials but we need propulsion we do need propulsion and before you do anything you need to check wrong button you need to check the center of drag which is I believe that gray line in the middle and this boat is a little bit front heavy which is going to mean that when it steers it'll steer into the water there's a trick for dealing with that which I will show you later but for now we do need to weigh down its backside so one way do we do that in fact quite a cunning way we do that or if not cunning just well bleeding obvious way is with lead lead is just the only reason lead is even in the game is to mess around with the weight of your ships. Do that. Hallelujah. Is the center of mass below the waterline? I think it is. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. Incidentally, like, if I had more time and was actually bothered, I could make this look a lot prettier. But I'm not going to. Because we have stuff to do. So now add propulsion and this is how I like to add propellers. I like to use slopes. Lots of slopes. So we are going to do that. Well, firstly I pretty much always use huge propellers as in large ones. So here, here, and there, and there, and there. You basically need to make a little 3x3 box to check that the large propeller can in fact go there. And then, the thing it attaches to goes right here, and then goes here. This is not the sexiest drive shaft, by the way. In fact, we can make it sexier. Watch this, watch this, guys. And we do that, and we do that, and then we can't really do anything about that. <laughs> Okay, we're going with the non-sexy drive shaft. Sorry, guys. Sorry. There we go. And this isn't actually a problem with it being only one beam because somehow the propeller will still work and be attached via the blade touching that. So, do that, gonna do that, gonna do that, and gonna do that. And then we have our huge propeller right... Where is it? Here, and it's a circuit propeller because that looks nice. Ta-da! Oh yeah, I'm not in the chair. I'm hovering over there for some reason. Beware of chair. Beware of me and chair. Whoa, 28 missiles. That's ridiculous. Okay, so away you go. And once you get this thing going in a straight line, you will probably immediately see any problems it has. Currently, nothing, so... We're going to stick another propeller on it. So here. And it's a very good idea to just overlap propellers as well. So here, one, two, three, four. Symmetry, please, thank you. And we're going to do this. We're not going to do that, apparently. Yes, we are. This is going to... Actually, no, that won't work. <clears throat> nope, won't work. Will not work. Will not work. My bad. You only have to have the central bit of the propeller clear. And, see? Now it's clear. Which means you can't have anything like this on it. So, this is the lowest part of the propeller. Are we clear? Yes, we're clear. Which means the next one can go... Here. Ta da! Incidentally, all this metal is firstly, remember my ships get hit in the butt a lot, and secondly, well, they get hit, hit, hit in the butt a lot, this will help. So, we do that now. We are now going reasonable lick through the water. And here's what I was talking about this thing is a bit front heavy, so. We should probably weigh down its butt a little bit more. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to tinker a bit, like this. A bit more here. 
gonna get that butt way down. Lower that butt! Lower that butt. There we go. Is this thing gonna stay in the water? Because at no point do you want your propellers popping out of the water, because they're useless when they do that. Okay, that'll do for now, and then we are going to stick a rudder on it. First we're gonna find the center of drag, because the rudder does have to be on the center of drag. It's right there. Excellent. And it's usually better to put the rudder behind your propellers. Doesn't have to be. Incidentally, you can use turning props as well, as in sticking these things on here sideways, like that. If they're on the back, be sure to put thruster reverse on them, like so. So we do this, and then we turn. This thing doesn't turn very fast, but that's okay. It actually turns quite nicely. It's not exactly the steepest turn in the world, but we can fix that because one thing I virtually always do with ships like this is you can put rudders on the front. Yes, you can, and it is amazing. But make sure it's in line with the back rudder, so it's still in line with the center of mass. I'm going to stick it right here, but it has to be upside down and the other way around. And you know that because the blade of the rudder, this front bit here, is pushing forward. Because now, this thing should turn about twice as well. Is the rudder staying underneath the water? Yes, it is. What happens when I do this? Whoa, okay. Yep. And that's the risk you take. So remember when this was going to be about a stable ship? Well, maybe the front rudder won't work so well with this design. But that's fine, because we can do this. Scaled by zero. Balls. How about... Now. Like that. There we go, there we go, that's beautiful. So there you have it, that is a boat that can move, and it's got all the stuff it needs to be an effective boat. I'm just going to tweak the AI settings and then we can have a demo of this thing fighting. Probably won't do very well because I tend to test my designs a lot before I do anything with them. So... Okay, so now, moment of truth. Does the thing drive itself and fire well? I forgot to tweak the weapon control. Oh well. Look at that! Away she goes! And she's steering nicely. And the Marauder is probably going to blow the crap out of her very soon. Also, we don't have enough ammunition for a missile barrage like that. Now, are we going to die? Nope, we're not going to die. We're just completely out of ammo. <laughs> so there you can see, this little hull is steaming away nicely. Incidentally, just destroy that. There is another final trick to make sure your ship stays steady in the water, particularly if it oversteers, as in it steers so hard it capsizes itself. And it involves the magic of... Hydrofoils. This is a trick I learned from Ireland Gaming, God rest his YouTube channel, and it's quite simple. You stick hydrofoils at the waterline of wherever you want your ship, so right here, and then you just stick a control block somewhere on the ship, like, oh, I don't know, right here, where there's just a useless little block, and stick that there, and activate on spawning. Hydrofoils, set hydrofoil angle to maximum. Test. Now you see all these things are angled up. And now we spawn in that Marauder again. You see, this thing can turn as hard as it likes. It is not going to capsize at all. Simply because those hydrofoils have really strong water resistance. And when one side dips in the water, the hydrofoils will push it straight back up again. Which is very nice, and I very like it. I've actually made a decent little ship here, and I didn't really intend to. Might have to tweak it a lot, anyway. Because there's a whole bunch of other things you need to stick on your ships in order to make sure they work well. Uh, things like... 
things like flares, things like smoke to defend against missiles and lasers and what have you. And there's a lot to learn, but this should hopefully give you an idea of just how to build a basic ship and put basic weapons on it and a good, decent propulsion and steering. So, on that note, ugh, no, I'm gonna get seasick doing that. We're instead gonna do this. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Hope this was helpful for those of you who want a good, stable hull in this game. Farewell!